Hi guys, that's Dorota Palicka International, new artisan educator here, and today we are going to play with some designs with the transfer hobby. We'll have a preview of them in here. It always looks fantastic when we combine it with the different techniques, and I hope you really enjoy learning it. If you do, let me know in the comments below, as I'm looking forward to reading them all. Also, you can request uh, what other tutorials you would like to see. I've got like a wee book where I'm writing them all down. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, as there is lots of tutorials coming up every Monday, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Let's start! We are going to play with some transfer foil uh, and transfer foil gels. So that's the one I'm going to use it. And that's the transfer foil. It comes in a pieces of a uh, few different ones. Uh, that's the flower collections. It's actually quite cool because you can, um, you can use it uh, for so many different designs. So on this tip, I'm going to um, do it the design on this top corner. And I'm just painting the foil gel glue in there. And then give it a cure. We are going to cure it for a 60 seconds. And in the meantime, I can prepare the piece of the foil I want to use for this one. Ideally, you should have a clean hand. I have applied a cuticle oil and that was a bit of a mistake. Um, so I'm just cleaning my hands a little bit. Um, so the transfer foil takes well. And then I want to cut it out some of those flowers. On this tip, we are going to paint it slightly different. And then give it a cure as well. So the first tip is ready. And I'm just going to pick up my transfer foil. Pick up the place how you want to place it. So actually I'm going to go this way. And then just press it quite decent and you need to rub it this really well into the tip. Like rub it in. Take your time, you can help yourself um, with the silicone tool. And once the foil catch it, you should be able to see it, the um, transfer foil to start to coming off. And that means it's a time to peel it. Do not peel it too soon, like you really want to peel it when you see the foil is coming off. Doing it on the client is always much quicker uh, because we can press it against it like much harder. My tip would just fly away from me if I would do that so hard in here.
you can see it it nicely peels off in this side I'm making sure I've got everything covered in there I can peel it a little bit more and then the rest of it so we've got beautiful flower in there we can put it on the side and then do the same in here so again I'm searching the design I want to transfer place it there and then wrap this in Those tips are quite soft, so when I'm rubbing, they kind of spring back. Uh, but you can see it here, the foil starts to coming off, so that's mean we have transferred it well. What I'm doing now, I'm supporting it from underneath with my finger, because otherwise they will just spring back on me. So the pressing isn't pressing, if that makes sense. So if you struggle like on the tips, just support them from underneath so they are a little bit harder. Some of the tips are hard, some of the tips are quite soft and they are actually really soft and bendy. So that's making it much more difficult to transfer. Okay, the stop, this side is all nicely done. I want to just press it against the other side. And that's it all done. I'll show you what I mean by bendy tips. So they are really, really bendy and like even on the top. And when I press it, they just spring back on me. Well, let's do another one. So we've got two beautiful ones and another one, maybe halfway through it. Or on the bottom. No, let's do it on the bottom here. And then give it a cure. <coughs> and then I can start, when my tip is curing, I can start mixing the other colors which we are going to get. So that will be pink and we will make that out of those two gels. I've got my mixing spatula and I just pick up a drop of the white and then drop of the red. So 
start mixing the color and wait for the chip to be um, cooked. So I want some nice pink. Got a really beautiful color now. And I'm going to transfer the last tip. And you know what, guys, I'm going to straight away pull it so I, I don't struggle. It's my fault for applying this cuticle oil on my hands. And um, usually if I'm doing like a precise designs, I can also clean the um, back of the foil with the blue scrap. The ones which are having the designs do not clean them because the stuff is going to come off with it. Uh, so I do not recommend in doing so. The transfer foil have been touched too many times with the oily hands. So this is a mistake you shouldn't be repeating. Like you can see it, I'm flooded with the cuticle oil because I had so much dry skin. Been gardening. This is just not going to transfer 100%. It must have some shiny bits and pieces on the back. So what I'm going to try to do it is I will, I cannot clean the foil on the back because it will take the design off. But I'm trying to clean it, the gel, so it's not oily. And see it if it will work. I did it. <clears throat> okay, so let's do it so you can see it. I have transferred it just because I have cleaned all the <laughs> cuticle oil from it. Now the other one is here. I I'm actually glad uh, it worked it um, because quite often we don't know what to do if something goes wrong. So what you could do is take the eyelash um, eyelash brush, like a tiny wee micro brush and just go and clean it properly um, around it because you don't want to touch it. Or I could do it as I could clean it with the brush as well. So let me take some brush. I've got some blue scrap on this brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning those empty spaces. Because we cannot clean the foil because the design will just come off.
okay, I will be happy with this one on that one. <laughs> so just let's uh, let's move on into the redecoration in there. So we are going to use some pink, which we have painted there. And just paint some design. I'm doing all the possible mistakes today. <laughs> It's good, it's good, it's good, guys. Then you can see it, we've got all good and bad days. I should call it, it watch me struggle with the new art. <laughs> <coughs> okay, give it a cure on this one. Some painting on that one. But anyway, it was hard to damage my hands like uh, for the garden. It looks nice at least. But yeah, I've got so many dry bits and pieces. <laughs> and this one, I'm not going to uh, put the pink in there because it's, it has already quite a lot of pink. So my next step for this one is to use the striping tape. And then trim it. Like when you're trimming the striping tape, make sure it doesn't stick out uh, from the tip because uh, that could make it, it catchy and then it could be easy to peel off. Okay, so I have trimmed the striping tape. I'm going to do it the same on the other ones, obviously just a slightly different placement. So just place this one in. Again, you can use the silicone tool to press it down, then trim it. I have also changed the shape of the striping tape a little bit, just so it's not as straight. And now I can trim it. Okay, make sure the corners are nicely touched up and do another one. I 
again I have put it a little bit at the angle so it's not as straight Now, when we're working with the striping tape, I don't want it to come off um, for my clients. And I have find it out that applying a drop of the base over it before we do the top coat, it makes a magic. So the next step is to take a base gel. And that's what we are going to use also for the crystal application as well. <coughs> so a drop of the base gel. And now I'm going to take some thin brush, some crystals, caviar beads. And we are going to play with some design. So I want some crystals to go in there. But straight away, I'm applying a small drop of the base gel over my um, striping tape. Then the gem picker. And we are going to add a couple crystals. Drop more. That's definitely looks so pretty with the crystals on it. And then give it a flash cure. Here I want some different crystal designs, so small amount of the base gel over the striping tape. And then some crystal design in here. That's some gold bits and pieces. Let's see what I've got in there. Uh, actually, this is quite nice. So let's do it slightly different. Mm.
just because it's quite large I cannot uh, leave just those two tiny crystals so I need to add it more of them otherwise it wouldn't just go Okay, give it a flash cure so we can do next step. Here, a couple crystals. Actually, I should place them on the top, so let's do it on the top. Cover the striping tape. And I like when the things goes together, so I'm just going to take the similar stud. Give it a flash cure. Okay, the first one is flash cured, so I can move on into the next step. <laughs> Got all the possible struggles today. So drop off the base gel and place some base gel also around it as well just so it's not catchy if the things are catchy then it is always much more difficult for the clients uh, because it would catch on the hair um, and also it will um, it will be really annoying as well okay I'm also placing the base around the crystals because we want to do some wee caviar bits in there I think that's um, the caviar bits always make the design look really elegant and beautiful. They tend to like really finish it off. It's actually quite romantic design, I would say. And I'm, I usually for caviar bits because they are quite, they are metal bits and they are quite damaging for the brush. Uh, do not use your good brush for that. Like I usually use it uh, some damaged brush. Another thing which I need to tell you guys about the caviar beads, if you're gonna place them like really take your time and place them nice and straight, uh, if they wouldn't be placed nice, I think they would just look ugly. <laughs> so I'm always taking my time for them. 
got another brush which is my old brush you can see it, how hungry it is <laughs> Let me check how we done the other one. And sometimes when I'm placing those single caviar bit, I will just gently dip it in, into the base because I didn't have the base at that end. Another thing which I can suggest, because uh, sometimes I read like a lot that's uh, the caviar bit slides or something, what you could do it is uh, give it a flash cure and then that will be staying in one place. And then quite a decent drop of the base gel inside and we are going to put some crystal in there. I really like it, um, the look of it. Well, that's a better size and it's so nice and pretty. Give it a cure and then this tip will be finished. This one I just need to add a little bit into it. So I want this large gem here plus couple small caviar bits. Not as many as on the other one. The other one had most of them. If you're missing a single caviar bead, pick it up from the side. Like, so what I usually do is I pick up a couple and then I place them there so I can pick up also some single ones. Because uh, if you dip in your brush, it will grab quite a lot of them. So when I dip in, in my brush, you can see it, I've got lots of them. I remove the excess on the side and then I can place them there. Okay, move them into the places you want, get this large gem. And just so the caviar bits don't look too rounded, I'm just going to add a couple more on the sides. give it a cure and then it's a time for the next step so we need to first of all top coat it everything and then we are going to play it with the next part so I'm just applying the top coat I usually do put the top coat over the caviar beads uh, I quite like it over the caviar beads um, because then nothing is happening to them like and also I find it, if I'm putting the caviar beads, uh, I find that the clients tend to have their nails last, like the caviar beads, no, if I'm applying the caviar beads around the gems, the gems itself tend to even last better, okay? So again, top coated, but I do not pop the top coat over the gems, only the caviar beads. And then give it a cure. Let's finish this one off. I 
Uh, no, that's quite... I will just leave it the way it is. Top coat, the top part. And here, because the situation is very easy, I'm just going to top coat it this top part and don't top coat the bottom. Okay, this tip is cooked, that's the first one. Then taking the top coat, putting it on the side. Grab my brush and we are going to sugar it. So I want to sugar this part here, only the pink one. And I also want to sugar the top part as well. Or maybe not, that will be too much. This one is quite rich. So we are going to sugar it only this part. I actually wonder how the sugar would look on top of the um, design as well. I think it could be quite nice and pretty too. So sprinkle it. Tap to remove the excess and then give it a cure. This one I can straight away go with the top coat into the entire bottom part. Sprinkle. That's nice. And here I want to go on white. So couple things for sugar ink you always need like a good strong uh, no wipe top coat uh, just so it stays on a nice and decent time and for sugaring always use like a very fine fine sugar do not go too big um, if you're going with too large particles it's easier to catch it this one is just like so fine And I find it like catching it back to the pot is always quite handy. The sugar is not going to stick into the previous part. Actually, I love it how it looks in, um, on the design. Oh my goodness, let's try it, guys. Let's try it. I think it's pretty. I'm going to do it on this one. So I'm painting with the top coat, only on the design part. And now I'm going to sprinkle it with the sugar, let's see it. Oh no, my design disappeared! It's fine, it will be it will be uncovered once we cook it. I think it will look actually quite nice. So put it on the side. I will be probably playing with a few more uh, ideas because I quite like this set, so I might add to maybe more flowers or something in there. Uh, let's take the first one. So this one is ready. And I'm just going to take a dust brush and remove any excess of the dust so you can see it as really nice and pretty absolutely amazing and place it in there next one 
remove the excess of the sugar. That's actually quite nice too. You know, really subtle look. Now maybe like romantic rich, but also delicate. Now I'm going to place it on the side because I'm, I think the other one might look really nice and it will be my favorite one. So that's the, oh, it looks so pretty together. Okay, so it was worth my struggle, like a bad new tech day. Then that's the one which is sugared. It looks quite nice as well. Uh, you can still see it. There is some sort of flower in there. I quite like it too. It's different. Yeah, it is different, like totally different. Yeah, it looks pretty, like really pretty. Yeah, the middle one, I love it. Okay, guys, I hope you have really enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm sending you lots of glittery hugs and bye for now.